uh, uh, coloring it from the inside. Okay, now I'm gonna <clears throat> I'm gonna back back me off, and in a second I'm gonna show you um, a little PowerPoint with some uh, I think some pieces I can't really remember. Anyway, uh, I'll I'll show you that in just a second. But what I want to do first, I've got something chucked up into my my lathe between centers, and this device. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty good with coming up with um, teaching aids, let's call them. So th this side right here has a, a 10 TPI thread on it. And over here, this has a 20 TPI thread. And there's some lessons here as far as lathe speed and your traverse. Okay, so if you have your uh, your lathe going and you got your thread chaser, how fast is your traverse? Okay. And if you're uh, going on this coarser thread, it tends to be faster naturally. The, the 20 TPI over here really goes a lot slower. Anyway, I've got a couple, couple nuts on here. You can see those follow along. And you can see the one right here is going a lot faster. That's the 10 TPI. Okay, so there, there's a lesson there as far as, um, you know, how, how fast your lathe is going to go and, and how fast your traverse needs to go. Let's do that one more time. I'll slow my lathe down a little bit. So anyway, there, there are some implications there. So anyway, if I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, if I'm chasing with a 20 TPI over here, I've got to have the lathe speed a little higher, okay? And if I'm, if I'm chasing with um, a more coarse thread chaser like over here, I can go slower um, or I can turn the lathe speed down. And that's kind of a neat thing because that's one advantage of a coarser, a coarser thread. Now um, we didn't we didn't cover this. I don't know if Tom mentioned this, but I'm I'm very good with questions. Just interrupt and ask a question, uh, and and sometimes that helps me remember things I should remember. Okay, now. Um, I've got, I've got a box of, uh, well, let's see, where should I start? I've, I've got so much stuff behind me. I think I'll just uh, do this very quickly because we've been, we've been talking about uh, the opening of vessels. And for some reason, most of my, my vessels have always been uh, with a pretty small opening. Now, this box contains uh, hollow forms that are in different stages of completion. Okay, this one's a little bit farther along. Most of these have an insert in them. <clears throat> Some of them have a lid. I need to I need to find a different camera. Can 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 you back that? <clears throat> oh, go yeah, go the other. Oh, I I think that must be all. Let me let me just put this box down. Too much stuff. There, there you now you can see that. So th this is in kind of the early stages. This is some box elder. Uh, I need to sand that. It's got a lid. It's certainly not a finial, but it's got a lid with with an insert. And if you're new to thread chasing, this is not a bad place to start. That's got a black wood insert, and I suspect that's a a 16 TPI thread like most of them are. I'll just show you a couple more of these. <clears throat> this is what my vessels typically look like before I put an insert in them. Okay, it's got a little ledge right there that uh, kind of trues everything up. And 
Sometimes I glue the insert in and then do the thread chasing. Sometimes I do the thread chasing first and then glue it in. I don't know if it makes a big, a big difference. Uh, some, something I saw from, from Chris Pitlick, this is just a, a, a wire hanger that, you know, if you're spraying vessels like this, and, and some of you probably do that sort of a thing anyway. Um, there, there's one more I wanted to show you. <clears throat> Ordinarily, I, I do my vessels with a, a 16 TPI thread chaser, and, and that's what this is. This is a piece of uh, cast acrylic rod right here. And if you, if you chase threads in this plastic, um, you want the, uh, the cast acrylic, you don't want extruded. So this takes a great thread, but you have to sand this to like, you know, 12,000 grit. This piece is about ready to go. And, and you guys were talking about leaving the little nub on the bottom of that. And I leave that on, you know, pretty much through the process. And when I, when I get to the point where I'm ready to, to finish this, I'll take that off, put it between centers. Okay. I'm going to just have my wife move that out of the way. Um, I think what I'll do, I've, I've got a couple, um, <clears throat> excuse me. I got a PowerPoint and a video on thread chasing, and I'm going to just sort of break those up just a little bit. Now I'm, I'm good with phone calls. If you would like to call me, um, I sent Tom some files and some links to my website and, you know, I'll get the wrong date on there. Boy, it's 2021 already. Anyway, uh, there's my phone number. Uh, I'm usually just out in my shop. Just uh, give me a call. So my website is wyomingwoodturner.com. And if you go to the demonstration topics, um, one of the menu items is traditional thread chasing in wood, and it's got a, a wood list and thread chasing precepts, which will, I think there's a list in here of that. Um, uh, specific gravity. Okay, let's, let's take a look at, at specific gravity. All right. <clears throat> And I, oh, I'm sure some of you um, have heard of specific gravity or understand what it's all about. Um, basically, it's a comparison of, of water and wood, or the, I should say the weight of water and wood. Well, if you're looking for wood that will take a good thread, you're looking for dense, hard, um, diffuse porous wood. And if you have a cubic foot of water at sea level, it weighs 62.4 pounds. Okay, so the equivalent in wood, you know, like a specific gravity of one would weigh the same amount. Okay, and someplace, if you look at some of the, thank you, dear. If you look at some of my, my wood lists, which I think there's one coming up here. Um, there's a corresponding specific gravity. Um, lignum vitae is one of the densest woods, takes a beautiful thread. The, the issue with lignum vitae is it shrinks pretty, you know, extremely. Ah, that's not the right word, but <laughs> you, you have to watch um, lignum vitae. I've had some, <clears throat> some problems with that. And anymore, I pretty much rough turn everything, you know, not just bowls, but I rough turn my boxes and put them away and let them dry out a little bit more. And then I, I go back and I, I do some thread chasing. But specific gravity is a really good indicator of what wood will take a good thread. Okay. Um, on my website, uh, several years ago, I wrote a article on thread chasing. There are some corresponding photos to that. Okay. 
So we just talked about specific gravity. Okay, there's, there's a wood list. And if we compare um, th this wood list, it would be very similar to those people that do uh, like Rose engine wor work. Okay, very dense wood that, that these take a really nice thread. So boxwood, uh, I've given up on trying to find boxwood. It's really, really difficult to find. Um, and I'm kind of past it. it. You know, that's one way to look at it. There are a lot of other woods in the world that will take a good thread, uh, including uh, maple, hard maple takes a pretty good thread. Uh, anyway, there's the, uh, the corresponding number there, which is the specific, num specific gravity number, lignum vitae. African blackwood, 1.27 king wood, uh, a wood called partridge wood, which does take a, a really pretty good thread. At the very bottom of this, this list, wrong way, there is a website uh, for tropical exotic hardwoods. And you can get beautiful wood there. I think they're in like San Diego or someplace. Um, but you can get a lot of these woods from tropical exotic hardwoods. The wood database will also give you great information as far as uh, you know, information on wood, including specific gravity. So you have uh, mountain mahogany, American hornbeam, hard maple, rosewoods, pink ivory. And I'm gonna turn some, some pink ivory <clears throat> later on. Now, to be successful in thread chasing, you need to have uh, well-sharpened tools, the proper chasing speed. Uh, the, the traverse is important. Uh, understanding wood for thread chasing, uh, the chamfer, and I'll, and I'll cover these as they go along, the chamfer and the, uh, the recess that are important. You, you like need all these to be successful. And if you're kind of uh, deficient in one of them, you know, you may have trouble. Okay, there's a set of thread chasers. And the question I get a lot of times is what is your favorite uh, maker of thread chasing tools? You know, what do I, I'm not even sure what these are, but I've got Robert Sorby and a number of different ones. The, the one I really like, comes from Craft Supply USA in Provo. Um, and I'll try to remember which one or I'll, it's, it's got a really short handle. If you look at these, um, the female chaser on the top, I had to do a little grinding because it was really wide. Okay, you can see that one area just above the teeth. I had to do a little grinding, which I don't recommend unless you know what you're doing. Okay, these are recess tools. Uh, the, the two at the top are tools I bought. The one at the bottom is an Allen wrench that I reground. And I'll talk about those. So there's a pretty good cross section of uh, a male and a female thread, the, the lid and the base. So you have the female thread, which, which has been cut in half. Uh, and then the male thread on the, <clears throat> on the left. And right below the thread on each one of those is the recess or the stop gap, sometimes called the stop gap. There's a point tool. And let's see here. I got a camera in the way. I'm gonna show you a little closer. I'm having trouble with this one camera focusing. There it is, okay. So here's a point tool. It's kind of worthless because it's made out of wood, but a point tool is basically three bevels and three cutting edges and a point, okay? And I'll, again, I'll try to remember to do a little bit of, uh, demonstrating with, with a real point tool. 
if you have um, the point pointed upward, you don't want that in the wood. It's like any cutting edge. You're going to have a problem. Okay, so if the, if the point is in the wood, actually cutting in the wood, you need to have it trailing. And you'll figure this out very quickly. You won't get a terrible catch, but um, you can do a little bit of planing with these edges. Uh, it's a marvelous tool. And even if you don't do thread chasing, uh, it's, a, it's a great little tool to have, um, especially for, for doing something like, like beads and that sort of thing. So now this is an inside tool. And I've got a bunch of these I'll show you. Um, I don't want anybody to go out and, <clears throat> and buy a bunch of tools other than the thread chaser, um, which, you know, you have to have that. But, you know, you want to make sure that you are serious about chasing threads. This is one I made out of a joiner blade, an old joiner knife. Um, and you'll see as I, as I demonstrate that, how it's used. Very, very handy little tool. Um, let's see here. I've got a bunch of tools. I think I'll show you this right now. If I don't show you when I, while I'm thinking about it. Uh, okay. Th this is actually a Carter and Son um, box scraper. Okay. You can see, you can see the, the profile is very similar to the one I just showed you. Okay, it's a scraping tool. And this is a real heavy duty tool. You can do some serious uh, wood removal from the inside of a little box with this. It's, it's almost too big, but you know, when you need it, you need it. It's, it's a pretty neat little, pretty big tool. Okay, put that up. And I probably have five or six of these, I've made most of them. And, oh, my armrest tool. Okay, in fact, I forgot to put my armrest tool on. Okay, let me, let's take a, just a little break. And if you have any questions, please jump right in there. Uh, and I'm gonna put the project up here, start working on that. Um, let me see if I can back this off. Okay. I'm going to try to find, find a good camera to show you this. Whoa. Okay. So here, here is my, my armrest tool. And the idea of an armrest tool is so you can address end grain without moving your, your tool rest. Any, anybody chasing threads and using an armrest tool out there? Hello? Nobody? <laughs> okay. So this is the piece of wood I'm gonna use tonight. And um, originally I was gonna use a piece of king wood, which, which takes a beautiful thread and if I can get that in, in some camera, right, there we go. Um, I wanted to really illustrate matching up the grain and Kingwood is really nice because it's got some, some crazy grain in that. So anyway, getting back to the, the armrest tool, if I want to address the end grain without moving the tool rest, I just put my armrest tool in there. Um, I don't ever use, I don't ever, chase threads anymore without my armrest tool. It is simply better. It's like two hands work better than, than doing it with one hand. And if you wanna look at some of my early videos on chasing threads, let's find a, yep. Here's a, a female chaser. And I used to just have the tool rest here, which is fine, nothing wrong with that. And you can certainly learn to chase threads uh, with the female chaser in this orientation. But like, like I always say, every time, every time I use my armrest tool, 
I'm not moving my tool rest. Okay, it pretty much stays here throughout the, the thread chasing process. Okay. Now let's see here. I'm gonna, I've got, I've got some, uh, I'm gonna do a little thread chasing, little, little turning, I should say. And then I'll uh, show you the, the little video on sharpening some of these tools. Any questions? Hello? Okay, oh, here it is. Sorry, I was looking for, looking for a tool. Um, th this is a golden mean caliper and a friend of mine in Wyoming, in Warland, uh, gave me this. And it's something that I probably wouldn't have gone out and got, you know, bought myself. But it's really cool. It's a it's a really neat device. Um, I'm going to bring in another camera. Just kind of get that set up here. There we go. If if you want to see a different camera angle, just just holler. I've got four, and I'm not always good about um, changing the the camera. So. This is gonna be the lid of my box, of my container right here. So uh, that's ordinarily the way boxes are made. So there's, there's the golden mean caliper. This would be the, the one to 1 1.6. Okay, so I'm gonna just put a little mark on here, um, but I'm gonna throw a little, well, let's see here. Another little variable in here. Um, when you're trying to match up the grain and eventually have the base and the lid in proportion, you, you gotta take into account where your threads are gonna be. So if I have this area right in here, the place where my join is gonna be, my lid may be too big in diameter or, or too big in in height, you know, I can almost see that right here. That's too close to the to the base. So um, I'm going to take another tool, just erase that. But but those uh, the golden mean caliper is really a, just a kind of a neat neat tool to have. So I think maybe I'm going to come up a little higher on that lidded area right there. And probably some some place in there is going to be my my join, my connection. So I'm going to take a parting tool and just uh, can't see that right in there. Take a little bit of that wood away. Okay, so this wood right in here, this area right in here, is going to be my male threads. All right, and I'll, I'm going to find a different uh, parting tool, and I'm going to just uh, just cut this right here. And something else this this does for me. It kind of reminds me where my connection is going to be, where my female thread is going to be, and where my male thread is going to be. And as I part this off, I'm not going to keep the tail center up the entire time because that can be a problem.
Let me go down just, just a little bit more on that. Is there any thought about having threads, female threads on the lid or three female threads on the bottom? Is there any? I'm, I'm sorry, would you repeat that? Is there any reason to put female threads on the top or the bottom or is it equally? Yeah, that's, that's an important question. Um, let me repeat, you know, why do we start with the female thread on the, the lid, do that first and then do the male thread later? It's, it's easier if you mate the male thread to the female thread. Okay, now the only, the only exception, it's not really an exception because I can't think of one where you'd start with a male thread, but sometimes you have a project where you may have the, the female thread in the bottom or the base, but you're still gonna start with that. It's just easier to, to connect your male thread. Okay, just part, the, part this the rest of the way. All right, that wood's a little bit squeaky, okay. Now let me, um, let me start by just taking some of, the, some of the wood away from the center here. And I'm gonna use one of my inside tools. Let's see here. Okay, there, there are a couple of my inside tools. And this one right here has a real, I'm gonna call it a sharp angle. And this one has a little bit, you know, different angle. Part of the reason for doing that is with this tool here, I can, I can have the tool, uh, yeah, the, the cutting edge go all the way back in at this angle. With this other one, um, and I'm and I'm here. This edge of the tool is going to hit the inside of my my lid or my base. Okay, so I'm going to just start out with my armrest tool, and I'm gonna slow my speed down. I think what I'm gonna do is find a drill. And this is usually what I do is I just take a handheld drill and I don't have to go down very far, but you can see the trouble I'm having with that, that center bit in this lid. And that's, that's good. I can very easily go down later with another tool and make that deeper. Okay, now I just wanted to show you a little bit of that. And if you've ever watched anybody like, like Alan Batty, who is not with us anymore, <clears throat> um, John Barkley, who I really learned thread chasing from, the nitty gritty of chasing threads. Um, there's a lot of jumping around and vibration um, when you're using that inside tool. Here's, here's another, I'll try this one. This, this is another 
um, box scraper. And I do have my tool rest moved, which will be a little bit, a little bit easier to hog out some of this wood. Is there a trick for getting the uh, cutting tool parallel to the outside of the wood? Um, let, me, let me kind of rephrase that. Um, yeah. Are you talking about the, how parallel it is in here? Yes. Um, that's that's a, a good question, another important question. What, what I'm looking at, if you, if you can look down on this tool, this cutting edge right here, I'm trying to line that up with my bedways. Okay. Right. And, and um, there are a lot of really, really important, uh, forgive me, I'm looking for another tool, but um, here you go. <clears throat> Get, getting this area right in here, this female recess parallel, the sides nicely parallel, is really important. The, the better you can get these parallel, um, you'll have an easier time as you go through the thread chasing process. Okay, and you'll you'll mate your threads easier. You'll line them up easier. Um, so I'm going to just take a uh, a round scraper here. I'm I'm really close to what I want to be the the bottom of the lid. Okay, I'm about, I'm, I'm good there. Um, now I'm gonna go back to one of my, my inside tools and make sure that that recess is where I want it. Um, it's probably actually a little thick if you, let me see if I can. Okay. There we go. All right. Finally. So this, this area right in here is, is a little thick. Okay. And yeah, it'll, it'll just cause problems later on. So let me just take a little bit of that wood, wood away. And again, I'm, I'm looking down the edge of that tool. Okay, so the next thing I need to do, I'm going to bring out a point tool and make a chamfer the very start of my thread. Okay, right, right in here. And again, you'll see that I'm, I'm not moving my tool rest, although it's a little high. <laughs> so I need a chamfer right here. Now, the other thing I need to do is make sure this surface right here is uh, as trued up as possible. Let's just use my point tool to do that. Okay. 
I'm going to see if I can draw you a little picture. Uh, <clears throat> you'll see why I don't draw pictures for a living. Um, So my thread is, is starting right in here. Okay, right, right in there. Now, I want, I want to round this over. Now you can either put a chamfer, which is really a, just a straight line. I like to do more of a, a round over. And, you know, here, here are my, my threads coming in this way, if you will. I think it's really important if you have um, two of these peaks hitting the wood at the same time. And, and that's especially true if you're chasing threads with a 10 or 12 TPI thread chaser. If you've only got one of these peaks hitting the wood, it's, it's more difficult to start. So a little bit more gradual rounded area is very helpful. Okay. Now, the next thing I need to do is I need to put um, a recess in the back of that. Okay. There we go. <laughs> this is a, I'm not sure what, what make of uh, recess tool this is. I look it up and then I can't remember what it is, but going back, uh, you know, like three eighths of an inch. And what I'm doing is I'm, I'm putting that in there and I'm, I'm pulling back. I'm getting some nice, look at that, nice shavings off that. I'm gonna make that a little bit wider. Right there, okay. So now I am ready to chase my thread. Um, any questions? I'm gonna use a, a 16 TPI thread chaser and I'm going to, I'm going to set on the, yeah. set on a good speed. I think I need, okay, let's, let's use this camera right here. <clears throat> okay. I think maybe I'll do a little thread chasing and we'll watch the video on, on sharpening. So um, I'm, I'm using a sweet 16. Um, I'm about 350. And, and what I try to do when, I, when I'm chasing is I like to be going as, as fast as I can, not crazy fast. But if you, if you're going too slow, you'll get a drunken thread, a wavy thread, okay? If you're going too fast, you'll get a double thread. And what you can do, if you're having trouble with your threads, you know, here's, here's a little, little threaded box. And that's, that's one of my, just one of my favorite little shapes there, uh, <clears throat> is you're having trouble, really inspect your threads, okay? I mean, look at them very closely, um, a double thread will be just that. If your lathe is going too fast, you'll get like a, like a, a big thread and then right next to it, just a little, a little tiny thread, but they'll be, you know, uh, you'll see that they're not good. Anyway, um, so too fast, too slow. I'm, I'm around 350. And... I think, okay. So one, one thing that I have a problem with is holding my, 
especially my female thread chaser parallel with the ground. Okay. And as I go, I'm going to, I'm going to kind of make a, a, like a, a fainting motion towards my, my chamfer and I'm going to hit the second or third tooth and I'm going to go back as far as I can. Yeah. Yeah. I think you can hear that. And hopefully you can see those. Those are uh, indicative of a nicely sharpened thread chaser. So as I go, go along here, I'm going to bring you back up to this, this camera above. I'm starting out about 45 degrees. And as I <clears throat> make the first couple grooves, and I've got a good groove, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to swing my thread chaser to where it's just uh, perpendicular to the opening. Okay, so I think I'm there. I can start moving my my thread chaser. Okay. Pink ivory is really, really awesome wood, but it's a little bit on the expensive side. Um, I think my thread is is just about where it needs to be. Let me see if I can find a different different angle, maybe. Yeah, that's not exactly. Let me let me bring you a little bit closer on this camera here. Yeah, you still can't you still can't see my my threads from from there. Anyway, you'll have to trust me. I'll take this out and show it to you when I when I get ready to go, move on there. Um, it it's really it's really pretty good. I'm going to do just a little bit more thread chasing, do and I'm going to. Do you chase until the uh, threads come out to points. Ooh, I, I love questions. I that's another that's another really good one. Um, let me kind of expand that. the The question was, do I do I chase the thread until I until I reach a peak? And and yes, but you need to stop shortly after that. If you keep chasing your thread, the the thread will will tend to crumble on those peaks. And when you're doing the male thread to match your female thread um, and, you're, and you're too tight, don't keep chasing a thread to reduce the diameter. Take a tool and just remove the, the peak and then do some more thread chasing, okay? But here it doesn't really matter. All I need to do is just, uh, you know, just reach that peak, which I, I am. Maybe I can move this camera out just a little bit. No, that's that's actually not too bad. <clears throat> now that that's not too bad. You can actually see my see my threads from that top top view there. Let me do one more thing as we go along here. <clears throat> now I'm not having trouble with my threads crumbling. Okay. Um, but I'm going to take some mineral oil and you can use wax. Uh, I, I use wax with a little bit of mineral oil. And I've, I made, I've made one little miscalculation here, which isn't the end of the world, but it's a, it's a teachable moment as they say. Okay. So I'm going to, um, I'm going to, I'm going to do just a little bit of uh, more turning up here. What I should have done, I should have finished the turning on the inside of my lid and done some sanding. I, I'll do it now. Uh, and since my threads aren't completely where they should be. 
I think it'll be okay. It's not not the end of the world. I'll just I'll just do. I have a little a little bump on the bottom there, so I'm gonna I'm gonna remove that because I do want to show you the proper sequence. And I'm sorry. I, the the rest of that really is is pretty good. Yeah. So I'm gonna grab a, a little bit of sandpaper. The, the other thing I like to do is uh, do some wet sanding. So if, if you chase your thread and you go back and you do some turning or you do some more sanding, that can be an issue. All right, I'm gonna just take, what is this? Four, it's, this is 400. And I'm going to just get in there and just, I'm going to do just a, just a little bit of sanding in there. What, what I often do when I'm demonstrating is I don't completely finish these, but I can do it later on. I'm, I'm going to save this little box. The outside is going to look like like it's a completed project. Okay, um, here, here is a little box with some, uh, some wax and mineral oil in, the, in there. So I'm gonna just use that to do just a little bit of wet sanding on there, okay. And then I'm gonna just, uh, Dry that off a little bit. All right. I'm not sure if I could have snuck that by you. Somebody out there is probably probably seeing what I should have done. There. You can you can see the inside of that fairly well. And I've just got some uh, friction polish. I'm going to put in there. Now, here, here's another question that you might ask, or you might be too polite to ask. Am I going to mess up my threads by putting a finish in there? <laughs> and I'm going to say, well, I could, but since I'm, I'm really not done chasing my thread, I think I'll be okay. So I'm going to go back down to chasing speed and I'm going to make one more point. Um, when, once you've got a pretty good thread established, um, you can slow your speed down. So I was at like 350 and I'm going to go down, oh, I don't know, 280. And at this point, there's no fear of uh, having a drunken thread or a double thread. I'm going to take a toothbrush and clean that out. So I'm going to do just a little bit more thread chasing on this. Too high. And we had a question. Yes. Uh, what prevents the thread from stripping when you're moving the chaser in and out? Oh, good question. Um, and, and this is something, again, I, I failed to really... Uh, hone in on <clears throat> when you put that recess in the back of your thread. Okay. Um, that, that gives you room to remove your thread chaser. Okay. I'm, I'm over here in my, in my box of teaching aids. Ah, ah here we go. Found it. Now, and I'll try to show you this a little bit more, a little bit more detail. So here's, here's a, 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 a cutaway, if I can get it in my, there, oh my gosh, I'm sorry. It's like, where's the camera? Okay, so there's, there's a, a cutaway of the female thread. And down at the bottom of that, 
right in here is is that recess. So as you're chasing that, that recess gives you room to remove your thread chaser before it hits that back wall. And, and that applies to the female uh, recess and also the, the male tenon. Okay, but that's a really important question. So let me do a little bit more thread chasing here. And again, I'm around 280. All right, I think I'm in good shape here. <clears throat> now, let me make yet another point. Um, as you're chasing your thread, the, and those, those really are nice. I mean, uh, I got lucky. Um, let, me, let me show you. Um, I got to know John Barkley. Get a better view of this here. Th this is his his book. Huh? Sorry. And and maybe your club has this. It's the book all screwed up, and this is full of really really nice. Uh, thread chasing projects. Most of them are puzzles. And about 10 years ago, John Barkley sent me an email. And I was just sitting there with my wife watching TV one evening. And I had already had his book. But he sent me the nicest email. And, and we started talking over the years. And um, he really instructed me on the proper approach for chasing threads. Okay. And yeah, I think, I think I'm ready to, to take that out and put my base in there, but uh, you know, I've really, I really learned thread chasing from, from John. So there, there's our female thread and I'm going to, find my male chaser. I'm going to put the base in here. Any, any questions? Oh, I know. Oh, sorry. One more, one more thing. Ah. Now it's a good idea to check how parallel these sides are. Okay. So I'm going to, I got to, an Allen wrench here, and I'm going to put that in there and hold that against the the thread like that. And if you can see, and actually you can pretty well look down that and see the the bedways. It's right. It's right there. I have a little bit of a taper going back in there, which is not anything to worry about. I'm just about parallel. Okay, so those are really looking, looking pretty good. So um, let's take this out. And hey we'll Sam, put the can you can, can you explain a little bit about your change in grip or your pressure as you're going from the 45 to the parallel mm -hmm. to the ways? It feels to me like you must be sort of relaxing your grip a little bit and letting the the tool follow the thread that you that you already established at the 45. Is that the case? Yes, exactly. Let me, let me, uh, I'm going to put the base in here and I'll, I'll demonstrate that. <clears throat> Cause that's, that's something that's really, uh, all, all this stuff is important. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm going to find a, a vernier caliper and, uh, Get my male thread. The recess you're clamping on, isn't that what you uh, relieve for your thread? Would, would you repeat that? The diameter that you're clamping on, wasn't that the recessed area you did to thread? 
when you, the before you separated the top from the bottom. Oh yeah. Uh, you mean that little area I left in there? I, I'm not sure what you're what you're asking. Okay, but let me. The, the diameter of the tenon that you're grabbing isn't that the. Didn't you cut that before you separated the part? Oh no, no, that's that's the bottom of my of my box. Okay. Okay, so th this is the top of this. Let me let me do one more thing. Um. If, if you look at the thread chasing precepts, there, there's a list in there someplace called <laughs> thread chasing precepts. Uh, I gotta, I gotta find, and I, and I, and I also need to point this out. This is an important. Okay, it's right there. So late, later on, when I go to matching my grain, I, I need to have a line going through there, okay? And, and we'll kind of hold that in reserve for later, but that's, that's also important. So um, I'm gonna, I've got the, uh, the diameter for this recess on my, on my vernier calipers. And I'm gonna mark that on, on my base, a little bit more speed. All right. Now, let, let me mention um, a, a mistake I've made over the years. A couple times, probably more than a couple times, if I were to hollow this out right now, and my diameter went past this pencil line in that direction on the outside, I wouldn't have enough room out here to chase my male thread. Does that make sense? Um, if, you, if you compare this to a slip fit box, um, the threaded male and female areas have to overlap, okay? And, and if, I, if I hollowed all this out right here and I went too far, I'd have a problem. So I've gotten to the point where I, I do my, my male, uh, tenon and threads sooner in the process. Okay, now I'm, I'm trying, trying to remember and, and get back to the question about the pressure I was using for, for my threads. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just take off a little bit of this. It's a little bit out of balance. Just take a skew chisel. Now, while I'm here, I, I need to just take this down to that pencil line and leave a little bit of room. I'm not gonna go all the way down to it. Okay, I'm still good. Now, I'm gonna take um, my male thread chaser. Okay, right here. And <clears throat> I'm gonna just chase some threads on the outside of this. And, and I'll, I'll demonstrate what I was talking about or what, what the question kind of referred to here. I'm gonna go down to chasing speed. I'm gonna just put some, some threads on there very, very quickly. Go down to I'm, I'm like at 550. I'm going really fast, but that's, that's okay. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of a chamfer right there. So I just need to establish a thread in here to, to kind of give you an example. Okay. Now, that's as long as it takes to establish the groove, okay? And what I'm doing as I, as I chase my thread is I'm, I'm pushing 
I'm pushing my thread chaser into the wood. Okay. I'm, I'm not moving it with my hand. And I, and I brought up John Barkley because he saw me chasing threads in one of my um, videos. I'm gonna try to move this camera just, there we go. And he knew that I was pulling it with my hand and you don't need to, you, you, my left hand isn't doing anything. What I'm doing is I'm pushing my thread chaser into the wood. And the only, the only thing my left hand would be doing is bringing that thread chaser back to the, to the start there. And you, you know, there's some, that's what it's about. My, my wife laughs at me because I, I get excited about these shavings. Anyway, there, there it is. Now, um, I, I hope that answered the question the gentleman had. That, that, that's good from the outside. I was more asking, I mean, I guess the same technique is on the inside where you're doing the same kind of relaxing the pressure uh, and letting the, the, the existing thread pull you through. Yeah, exactly. Let me, let me get my, my female thread chaser. So let, let's pretend I've got a recess here. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling this back with my armrest tool. Okay, my right, my right hand is not doing anything. I'm searching for the ideal camera there. That's not too bad. There we go. So as, as I've got that female recess established and I'm, and I'm chasing that thread, all I'm doing is pulling back on my armrest tool. I'm not pushing with my right hand. Okay, all I'm doing here is just keeping, keeping this tool level with my right hand and I'm, and I'm pulling it back into the thread. And, and that groove is determining the traverse. Okay, it's, it's exactly the same thing I was doing uh, a second ago with my male chaser. Okay, right here, I'm just, I'm just pushing that in. Yep. And all, all my, Huh? That's perfect, Sam. Thank you. That that's that that explains it for me. Good. Okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna work a little bit more on my male tenon right here. And to find a a proper tool. Th this particular tool right here is a is a D-way tool. It's got a um, a box scraper on this end. And I've got this in a quick release handle. And then on the other end, it's got really, it looks like a, like a beading and parting tool. But this is really good for, for establishing that uh, male tenon. So I'm at uh, turning speed. So I'm, I'm putting a taper on that. And let's see if we're, we're not quite there yet. Now, um, okay, I'm gonna move, move, move this camera a little bit more on top. There we go. I, I always get these questions, um, you know, what's the measurement? You know, like from the, the peak of your, thread to the valley what what is the measurement um i don't know i don't i'm not sure if we can actually accurately measure that and transfer it okay but it, right here what i've got is a little bit of a taper on that now the very beginning of that male tenon is not beginning to fit okay so i'm going to take that taper off there right there. And I'm going to put a little bit more of a taper. I'm going to just kind of bring that out just, just a little bit more. And as I keep doing this, I'm eventually going to, you know, kind of, you know, start being where I should be with the size of this male tenon, a little bit more of a taper. 
right there, try it again. Not quite there. Now, every time I establish the taper, I'm gonna take it off because it's still, still too big. Okay, very good. Sometimes you get lucky. So as I put this on here, and I, I hope you can see it, there, <clears throat> there's a little rub mark right there. That is, <clears throat> excuse me, that's the exact diameter of my male tenon. Okay, that's exactly where I need to be when I'm, when I'm chasing my threads. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do before I forget is I'm gonna play that video of the sharpening. Um, before I do that, I'll make, I'll make one, one more point. When you're doing your, your female threads, okay, you can have these female threads a half an inch long, three fourths of an inch long. Um, and I think you can probably see those, those look pretty good. Okay, it doesn't matter. Now I'm talking about matching up your grain. Okay, it doesn't matter on the female thread. Now, the male thread, if let's say that I, I come back to there and I, and I make that the entire male tenon, I mean, it's like three fourths of an inch long, I'm gonna have a problem lining up my grain because the male threads are so long. So you wanna try to make this male tenon threaded area a little bit shorter. Okay, all right, I'm, I'm gonna find my, um, my video because there's probably some questions about sharpening. And this little video will answer every question you've ever had about sharpening thread chasers. Ha, ah, okay, we're gonna sharpen the female thread chaser. And there is my female thread chaser. And I promised I would show you that one thread chaser I was talking about right here. Okay, this is my favorite. This is, um, it's actually called a Maves and Warwick. Uh, you know, the name is not terribly important, but this is the one that craft supplies sells, okay, in Provo, Utah. I mean, look at this, this is uh, maybe 10 and a half inches long, but you're, but you're using this right in front of your, of your body like this, and it's just an ideal size. Okay, it's a really nice size of a thread chaser. I can chase threads with any of them, doesn't matter. Uh, another one, while well, I'm on the subject, this is one by uh, Carter and Son Tools. And it's got the male and the female thread chaser in one tool. It's very handy because they're both together. So if you can find one, you can find the other. Or go ahead, if you lose one, you've lost them both. All right, I had to get that in. Okay. Now let's see, let's forge ahead with this. Do a little bit of uh, sharpening and I'm gonna just uh, cover the end of that with the magic marker and that'll help uh, determine how much of that I've reached for sharpening. And I've got my platform here. If you do this, make sure your platform is really close to your grinding stone or your CBN wheel. You don't want that to jam in between the two. And I'm, this is an 80 grit CBN wheel. And it looks like I've pretty much hit the, the, the cutting edge. And all you're doing is you're sharpening the top of this thread chaser. And for some reason I keep sharpening it. <laughs> And that's all you need to do. I'm going to, I'm going to get a piece of paper with, uh, oh, there's my, my mail chaser. 
And usually when I go back to uh, chasing, or excuse me, sharpening these, I may not have my platform up there. I just kind of put it in position. And I'm gonna show you two ways to do this particular tool. We just kind of do it freehand. And it's a good idea to kind of start on your heel and rotate the tool down or move it down until you hit the, the top. Not quite there yet. And then in the second, I'm gonna show you probably a more accurate way to sharpen this male chaser. But this works, you can, you can do this and it takes a little bit of practice. There we go. And, and the most important tooth is the lead tooth. You have to make sure that is sharpened. Now here's another approach. Would you give me some coffee? <clears throat> so I'm gonna move over to my left. Okay, so I'm, I'm at my uh, V arm and this is probably to me, the most accurate way to do this, you just line that up and you can uh, sharpen a little bit and then take it out and look at it, do a little bit more sharpening. I'm adjusting the V-arm. <clears throat> this really isn't difficult. You'll, you'll kind of figure this out and I'm not sure if you can go wrong too much. Okay, now I'm gonna sharpen the point tool and I've got a video making a point tool, which is an old Phillips screwdriver. So you're putting the, the bevel against the sharpening wheel and the edge is looking straight back at you. And you just go from one bevel to another until it's all sharpened. And probably a good way to do this, and I, I'm not sure if I was in, using my V-arm or not. Now, this is a very simple tool to, to sharpen. And there we are. Oh, and I think I'm at the end of my video. Okay. I, it was so interesting. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to show you Sam as far as sharpening how about that first tool that you use to create the void I can't remember the term that you use but the one that's the void oh. that's beyond right you know yeah let, let me find it here um, I imagine it's, a, it's similar but thought it might be useful to see th this little this is a recess yes. recess tool yeah um, all, all you're doing and I don't know if you can, let me get a, a better, better camera. There. This, this is a really nice little tool, but it's not very like heavy duty. Find, find there, there's a good angle. I never do anything with like the front or, or inside here. I only sharpen that on the top because I think it wouldn't take much to, to just kind of eat that tool away as, as you sharpen it. So the only time I, I just sharpen the, the very top of that, and I can, you know, you can take a, a diamond hone and do that. And also with your thread chasers, you can, you can all, also uh, use a diamond hone. I do that a lot with thread chasers. Okay, I was gonna show you a drawing here. Um, this is actually from another demo I did or, or video <clears throat> on scrapers. And a thread chasing tool is simply a scraper. So on the top here, this one is a conventional scraper. The top of that tool is flat, okay? And when you buy a thread chaser 
to begin with, they can be kind of aggressive because it's like a conventional scraper. All right. As you sharpen them, it becomes a negative rake scraper. Okay. So this area right in here and the, the, the farther you sharpen this back here, um, the more forgiving it is. It's easier to chase your threads when you sharpen it more. So to begin with, it's a little bit aggressive. Okay. All right, we, all right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make this area, I'm gonna make this tenon just a little bit longer. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna take, take these threads away. Make that just a little bit longer. Make it, make it easy on myself. All right, now I need to do two things. I need to find a point tool. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, Put a little bit of a chamfer on the front of that. Just, just like the female thread. And I can also take a little bit of this wood off right here. And I've got, I've got my tool handle uh, up in the air a little bit. And I'm gonna come back this way. I'm going to drill this out but if I get that far and I need to just level this out just a little bit in the back of this. Yeah, good, good view. I'm going to put my, my recess right there. Check my, my lid. I'm, I'm really close. I almost, I don't want to say I went too far. It's perfect. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to move this camera back so we can get my tool in there a little bit more. Uh, I'll, I'll change the angle. I want to I wanna show you a couple different angles. So now my chasing speed on this might be a little slower. When I did the female, it was more like 350, 360. So I'm going to go back. I'm looking at my readout here. That's about 315. Okay, so again, I've got my tool angled at 45 degrees. Now, when you first start chasing the, the male thread, you're determining the traverse, okay? Um, now, there we go. I had my camera adjusted. All right, so now I've got a pretty good groove there. And now all I have to do is, is push the tool into that groove. Now, before I go any further, I'm just gonna check this and just see if I'm in the ballpark, eh, we're, you know, we're not quite there, which is good. But I can almost, you know, I'm almost to the point where I can have my male chaser perpendicular, not quite. I'm going to go a little bit more. Now you have to be really careful. I'm going to shove my lathe off so you can see this. Um, if I keep chasing that and it hits that shoulder, I can strip my thread thread out. Okay, that can be a problem. Um, I'm going to show you. There we go. That's what I want. Now, here here is a really really good trick. And Alan Batty, if you're starting and you want to find a a good 
DVD um, that one Alan Batty made years ago is a pretty good place to start. And one of the things he he showed in that in that uh, DVD is how not to hit that shoulder. So as I'm as I'm chasing my thread, I'll just turn the the lathe by hand as I as I approach that. Okay, you can see my my tool is trailing a little bit. Before I hit that shoulder, I'm going to lower my tool handle. And what that does, it disengages the cutting edge of my chaser. Okay, now let me just let me just show you that. And I've got a pretty good thread there. I'm going to turn my speed down just a little bit more. I'm still about 240, which is not real slow. Okay, so lower lower the handle and i hope you see what <laughs> i i can't watch and chase the thread at the same time i'll be in trouble now i don't want to go too far here before i test this again all right that is that is there that is there i don't think that's grammatically correct but yeah I probably got two and a half layers of thread on that. As I, as I thread that on there. Now I do have um, a shape in mind here. Now my, I got my pencil line there. And anyway, what I'm trying to do is line my, my my grain up. So I'm going to take a little bit off this shoulder. Okay, what that does is my lid will thread on a little bit further. And hopefully I'll find that spot where the grain lines up. Okay, you can do this two ways. You can you can put your lid back in here in, in your chuck jaws, take a little bit of this surface away right here. It'll do the same thing. Now, I may do that. I'm, I'm not sure. Here, here's the reason for doing that is because if I keep chasing this, or excuse me, if I, if I keep removing wood from this shoulder, my threads get farther away in this direction. And I could be in a position where they don't line up. But if I, if I put my lid back in there, I can take more of this wood off and it'll be okay. I won't, I won't. Okay. So much more than the camera. Question? Okay. I'm going to take a little bit of this, this uh, shoulder off with my, my point tool. Go up to turning speed. All right. Oh, you know what? I can I can see the grain. I'm not sure if you can. I'm going to find a pencil. <laughs> it's really close. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put the lid in there. And I think I've got my timer going and it looks like we've gone about an hour and a half. Um, I've got a little bit of ways to go here. So I'm gonna just maybe bypass drilling this out. Okay, well, I changed this. Any questions? It just means I've confused you completely. All right, I'm putting the lid back in here. And I can feel those indentations. So all I'm going to do is take a little bit more of this shoulder off. Not really a shoulder, it's more like a flat, a flat spot. Okay. 
and that'll just have my my base thread on a little bit farther. We'll try to line that grain up. So I'm gonna just use my point tool again. And at this point, you, you, you kind of need to go a little bit slower. Don't try to go too fast on, on this process. Yeah. I'm gonna bring my tail center up here just momentarily. I'm going to just flatten this area off with my, my point tool. Okay. Now I can do a little bit of shaping on this. And what I'm gonna to try to do is kind of um, expose that grain a little bit more so I can tell where it's at. And yeah, there we go. Got too many tools sitting around. So I'm gonna take a spindle roughing gouge and just clean up this surface. All right. Any questions? Sam, it looks like you're trying to make sure that when the lid is fully closed, the grain aligns. That, that's correct. Box. But when you're doing your hollow forms and the, the pieces you showed us initially, that doesn't, none of this matters for those pieces, right? That, that's correct because my lid is a different wood. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. There, I, I don't know how well you can see this. So right in here, my, my grain lines up and, oh, so what I need to do is connect this line in this one, which means there's not a lot I need to do with that before those lines connect. So I'm gonna take off just, just a little bit. because it doesn't take much to, to go too far and then you have to go a complete another revolution. I wanna show you something. I'm gonna draw, I'm gonna draw you another picture. Now we talk about um, threads per inch, you know, TPI. We're, we're basically talking about the pitch of our thread chaser. Okay, so we go. So here, here is the, let, let's just go this way here. 
Yeah, so there's the, the peak in the, in the valley, okay? And let's just say these are, that's a 16 TPI. And let's say that I'm one revolution off from matching my threads or my grain up. Okay, I'm one complete revolution, which means I have to take off this much wood from, from there to there. Okay, and that's not very much when you look at a thread chaser, especially a 20. Now, if I, let, let's say I'm almost there, in this case, I'm, I'm almost there. Okay, so I have to go to there. Not quite a complete, um, you know, peak to peak, but just about that much. That's how much wood I have to take off for them to made up or, or connect. Does that make sense? My, and my wife said no. <laughs> so, well, I hope it made, made sense to somebody. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this off and just do this one more time. I'm, I'm not quite there. So what I've got to do here, and I'm, I'm going real slow because I don't want to take too much wood off. You can see how, how little I'm taking off right there. We'll try this one more time, and I think I'll I'll just kind of move on. Now, something else you can do at this point. Um, I'm not going to line these pencil lines up exactly, because what'll happen is when I'm when I'm working on the profile of this, this can tighten on there a little bit more, okay, and it can actually go too far. So I'm going to just work a little bit on the. The shape of this. Okay, I'm gonna just kind of mess around here just a little bit with the shape. I've got a couple more things I'll show you when, once I get this to a, to a good spot. Having the tail center up is a good idea because it, it prevents the, uh, the thread from skipping the, the the thread. Okay, I got a little, little bowl gouge. A little bit more speed going, going here. Okay. I'm going to take just a little bit of sandpaper, make this look a little bit better. <clears throat> then I'm going to put some decoration in here, at least this area right here. One thing I like to do when I'm, I'm making a box is I like to put a little, a little area right here to designate where the connection is.
I can get a better surface with my, my skew chisel and that sandpaper. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna find a beading tool. I don't like those lines I put in there. There, I like that better. Something that can happen as I'm working on this, and I, I mentioned, um, I don't know if you can see that, you can't see that, right, right there and right there is where the grain lines up. So as, as I keep working on that, it kind of goes on there just a little bit, a little bit farther. Make a little chamfer right there and right there. Okay. I'm, I'm going to move on to something else. I could mess around with this a while more. What I really wanted to show you were some of my pieces. And we are at about one hour and 40 minutes. I'll take as much time as you like. And I can also take some time and look at inserts if you like. Oh, that'd be great. Okay. Get this someplace in the... Okay, there we go, sorry. Um, I'm gonna just very quickly just show you some of these pieces. These are all threaded. Uh, there's a good example of, of grain alignment. And believe it or not, this is a piece of cherry. Uh, I stabilized a bunch of cherry and it just takes a, a really nice thread once it's stabilized. What do you use to stabilize? Um, just a, a vacuum chamber and cactus juice. Th this is a little box I made during one of my thread chasing demos. So the bottom is lignum vitae and I, it's not completely finished. I have a little hunk of wood on the bottom of that, but I made a, a lid. I don't, I don't call this a, a finial, but it's a, it's a lid. Okay. Lignum vitae takes, just takes a beautiful thread. And let me see, I, I do a lot of uh, cast acrylic. This is a uh, alumilite resin, okay, that I, I cast myself. This is Mopani. And actually, here, here's a piece of Mopani I had, I wanted to show you. Okay, just gorgeous wood, takes a beautiful thread. And it's on that wood list, M-O-P-A-N-E, Mopani. So the lid is Mopani. And the base of that is some alumilite two-part resin. And when I, make, when I make these boxes, I typically don't cut these in half. For some reason, I find it easier um, just to make the, the base solid, do a little thread chasing here. Um, let me make a point. This overhead. Okay, you can you can see the the profile of this box. It looks like like a sphere. Well, as I'm doing the female thread right here, there's no shoulder back there. Okay, so it's really easy, and you can turn the speed up to 380 or 400, and chase that thread because there's no shoulder to contend with. Makes it a little bit easier. 
on yourself. Um, here, here's a good example <clears throat> of, uh, this is a mushroom, but it's a good example of uh, an insert. Okay, the lid is box elder, the base of this, uh, you know, it actually looks like Coca Bolo, but I've got an insert into the the top of this at Box Elder, and I've also got an insert in in the base, and and that's good. I mean, you're not using a lot of wood. Pretty easy to do. Okay. Here, here's another one I did in a demo. Look, looks a lot like this one here. Cheryl, my wife is laughing at me. Um, a, a lot of the, the stuff I learned from John Barkley. <clears throat> here's, here's an example of that. This is a uh, Mopani, very pretty wood. Take the lid off this. And on the top of this, I've got a little, um, it's, it's a, uh, ivory, artificial ivory, okay? And that's threaded into the lid. I won't take it out because it takes forever to get it out. But I've got that connected with a little bit of a, like a knitting needle, that little red bit there. And that also, believe it or not, let me, I can get it out. There we go. That, that connects that, that lid to the top of my box and that's threaded. So you have something like uh, a knitting needle and that takes a pretty good thread. Here's, here's another box. Um, something I often do is I, I do a lot of texturing and this is some boxwood. That looks like a Mopani lid. Just takes a, a beautiful thread there. Um, this one here, I'm going to move my camera. Okay. Th this little box here, I don't know, this is probably, <clears throat> I'd say, eight or 10 years old. So I've got um, boxwood, I got a blackwood handle. So it's all threaded together. And as I tighten that and I keep going, the handle comes off. Okay. So this is a left hand thread. <laughs> so it tightens going in reverse. And, and then you keep going and the lid comes off. Okay. So the lid, this part here, has right hand threads. And again, if I keep going, that bit comes off right there. And, and this is something I saw John Barkley do. It's, it's, a, it's a really cool technique. Um, if I had the same thread, like the same right-hand thread, and I kept going, the lid would tighten on this part right here, and I couldn't get it off. So there's the reason for doing that. And, and also... It's just fun to do. Okay. Um, I'm not sure what else is in there. How do you cut a left-hand thread? Ooh. <laughs> How do you cut a left-hand thread? Just, just hang on. I'm going to put this little box away. <clears throat> let's, see, let's see if I can find a piece of wood. Do I have any wood? Um, <laughs> So believe it or not, here is a connection with left-hand threads. Okay, so if I if I go to the right, it unthreads. Okay, um, I, I had a guy. He was a curator of a museum, and he contacted me, and he had a piece of furniture. I'm going to put this in my lathe. He had a piece of furniture. It was like a bed. Where's my uh, here it is. Anyway, he had he had a bed with uh, 
with threads on it and they were left-hand threads. And he emailed me and he says, well, how do you do left-hand threads? Do you, do you turn the lathe in reverse? <laughs> okay, if you turn the lathe in reverse, you, you couldn't cut. So anyway, I, let, me, let me just demonstrate that real quickly. I need to level this off. I think this is Bubinga. I think. So I just level this off. And then um, we're, we're still under two hours. So maybe I'll do a little bit of uh, talking about an insert. So if you're fairly good with thread chasing, it's, it's not really a big leap to do a left-hand thread. So I'm gonna put a little, little actually, I'm gonna put a, a recess back there. Okay, so we'll just chase a, a little bit of a male thread right here. Turn that down to chasing speed. Okay, now, if I'm, if I'm doing a right-hand thread, I'm going from right to left. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going in this direction here. If I wanna chase um, a left-hand thread, I'm simply, I'm, I'm starting here at the, at the, the front that's way too fast, I can tell, huh? And I'm gonna to go to the right. So I'm, I'm starting here. Oh, I got the wrong cam, I'm sorry, thank you. My, my wife is the, the director. Okay, so I'm gonna go from left to right. Okay, so Okay, so I've got a pretty good a pretty good thread established. I'm going to bring that in just a little bit closer. There, do, do a little bit more. So left to right. And each time I do this, each time I make a pass, I've got to go a little bit to the left and start farther over that way. is very impressed. <clears throat> now, th this is Bubinga and it's, uh, I, I usually don't try to chase threads in Bubinga. It's not, not the best. Now, here is the, the problem with this. And, and it's that shoulder. If, if I want to chase my thread right up to that shoulder, I got to get it in there and then go to the right and do that very quickly. So we'll go a little bit more. And, and again, I am I am just pushing my thread chaser into the wood. I got a good groove going. And that's all I need. Okay, let me, let me move on real quickly to uh, an insert, talk about inserts. Now keep in mind when you're doing this, you also have to do the same thing with the, uh, 
the female counterpart, and actually I could do that real quickly. I've actually got a, a recess right there. Oh man. Dan? Yes. Now two questions. One, do you sometimes reinforce the thread with something? And second mm. question, when the threads are done, do you lubricate maybe with uh, wax or something? Yes. <laughs> um, it's a good idea to, I'm trying to find the right button here. I'm getting, getting rummy. Um, here, here's my approach for thread chasing. I start out with the best wood I can find. I, I start out with something that will take a good thread to begin with. Now, sometimes I, I don't have real good luck with cocobolo. So I may start out with cocobolo and I may need to reinforce it with CA glue, but I don't start out with uh, like an inferior kind of wood and stabilize it with CA glue. It's messy and smelly and I don't think it's healthy for you. And I've got more wood that I can chase threads in then uh, yeah, I know what to do with. Now, um, do I wax the thread? Lubricate them, yeah. L lubricate them. Yeah, now this would have been a good, a good example for, for lubricating that, okay? Because they're, they're crumbling. But let me do the, the female recess real quick here. And same thing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start inside and come out. Start from the, the left, and, and go to the right. Find a good chasing speed here. Okay, that's 390. This really is not that hard to do. And, and again, I'm gonna start at the very beginning right here and work my way back each time. So, So each pass I make, I'm going a little bit further back into that recess. And I'm going to start straightening my tool out to 90 degrees. But I'm really pulling back on my, my armrest tool. Okay, that's all there is to that. <laughs> now I've got a box over here full of uh, inserts. It's gonna take me all day tomorrow to clean this mess up. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so this little tote has all kinds of insert material in there. Okay. So there's the start of an insert. That's a little piece of uh, boxwood. You know, I could go on and on. It's just all ready to go. Now here is, um, actually this is ash. And I, well, you, you could put an insert into this because you're certainly not going to chase threads in this, but you can see the opening. I've got a little ledge right there or shoulder, and that's where my insert is going to go into. Gazinta, it's a gazinta. And I think, I'm going to try this one here. And, and like I said, um, this is really a pretty good place to start. Mike Mahoney has a video on hollow forms. And I think at the end of that, he, he does an insert. He, he goes through the process of <clears throat> making an insert. And when I first started chasing threads, um, I, I kind of went off on what Mike was doing. 
And I did that for a long time. I just did inserts. So I want to fit, I want to fit this area into the top of this. So we'll find my calipers. I, I don't often measure, but um, it might speed up what I'm doing right now if I actually did a little bit of measuring. Okay, so that's where I want to be. <clears throat> Any questions as we're going along here? This is a great technique because it doesn't take a lot of wood. All right. Right there. So I want to go down to this line. And that's going to be the biggest opening in that recess right there. A little bit more. Put a little bit of a taper on that. Okay. Uh, now let's take a look at the opening of this little tiny hollow form. I've got uh, two dimensions here, Let me get, get a pointer. <clears throat> so this area right in here, okay, I'm going to have, that'll be this area right here. Okay, this area right in here is a larger diameter. Okay, so I can do, um, well, I need, I almost need to do this one first. And that's kind of where I'm at. And if you look on this, you can see that little rub mark. Okay, that's the dimension. In fact, there's a there's a corresponding burn mark right there. Okay, um, I'm going to try to make that level all the way back through there. And you'll see why maybe. Okay. Still a little bit big in diameter. Okay, now I can feel that this front edge right here is hitting that shoulder. Okay, so this area has got to be smaller in diameter to go back into this area right here. So I'm going to take that down just a little bit right here. And I'm only going to go back about two millimeters, like right there. And that'll kind of tell me if I'm small enough on that diameter. And if I mess it up, I've only messed up two millimeters. Go back a little bit further. All right. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of speed this up. Make that dimension a little bit a little bit longer because I wanna I wanna do the actual thread chasing on this. Mm 
what what I'm trying to do is to get this surface right here um, to fit in this larger diameter. Oh, okay. Still got to go down a little bit more. All right, I'm I'm almost there. Okay. <clears throat> And move some of my tools out of the way here. Would would you go get me some? Uh, there's a little wooden thing in there with Forstner bits. Better if I drill this out, or else it'll take forever. Any questions as we're winding down here? No. Oh, beautiful. There you go. Uh, so you thread the insert before you put it in. in. In this case, I am. Do you prefer that? Well, here, here's a little background on that. <clears throat> If, if I put the insert into the lid of a hollow form or the top of the hollow form right. and, and chase my threads, I tend to get a little vibration. Not always, but this is probably, I've, I've been doing this recently. I've been doing this procedure lately more than, more than the other. So I'm gonna take my Forstner bit and just drill that out just a little bit. And I'm going to make sure I go back far enough when I part that off, it'll, oh, there we go. Yeah, it made it all the way through. All right. Oh, crap. <laughs> All right. At least I only said crap. <laughs> okay. So I, I am going to chase this very quickly. And then I'm going to try to try to match that up. Uh, okay. Well, I can't, I can't find my, the right tool. I'm going to make this opening just a little bit, a little bit bigger. All right. So I'm going to just take a, a point tool. which isn't my preferred tool to use in this situation. I'm going to take my recess tool and just put a little recess back in here. Get down to thread chasing speed. Now, since I'm not making a connection, I'm gonna I'm gonna use my <clears throat> my 18 TPI thread chaser for the heck of it because I could find it faster than the other one. So I'm gonna just chase my my thread in there, and that'll be ready to glue in.
Now it sounds like I'm hitting a shoulder back there or something. This, this doesn't have to be perfect, but just get the idea. Those, those look pretty good, actually. Okay. Find one more. Oh dear. <laughs> well, a parting tool. Oh my gosh. Hmm. Sorry, I'm looking for a tool. Just give me any any old parting tool over there. Yeah, that'll work. Thank you. Okay. Okay, that's what I get. Well, anyway, <laughs> what's that? Oh, I think, <laughs> I think they saw, I had an explosion. I was, I was rushing and I was using my left hand and I just exploded my my little insert. Anyway, I think I'm done. <laughs> Anybody nice still out there? Oh yeah, we're here. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway. Yeah, Sam, if you were threading that last one, you were just threading. You were threading that from the inside going to the outside, the insert. Not, not that... on this one. It, it, yeah, when you glue that in, you're actually threading from the inside to the outside. Does that create a left-hand thread rather than a right-hand thread? No, no. It, it's the same from either end. Okay. Yeah. Except there's no proof I... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, I think I'm I'm about ready to call it a day. Any questions? Any more? You know, just a few questions as we. Yeah, I, I was uh, trying to figure out how are you going to finish the piece that you started. I just can't figure out how you're going to mount that. It looks like you cut off the tenon. Oh. Or are we just demonstrating the threading process? You mean the piece I was actually working on? Yeah, the one we started with. You were making a box. Can't find it. That's all right. That's all right. <laughs> no, I here it is. Yeah, um, just to know how you're going to mount that to do that, the inside. That's a good question. What what I would do now? The the base is still solid. Okay, so what I can do is I can go back and I can put uh, a tenon on this and finish the inside, hollow that out. The, the lid still has a tenon on there. And, and that's what I usually do. It's, it's not really near completion, but you know, I can put that back. I can make a little, little tenon down here and remount that. Right, thank you. Yeah. And you know, I know, I know you can't see it, but my, anyway, th those, uh, that grain lines up pretty well on that. Yeah, it does. Anyway. And when that, to, to fit that grain line, would you just sand the top surface a bit? Um, I'm not sure what, what you're asking. Well, you want to, you want to screw it on just a little bit tighter, another about 15 degrees, less than 15 degrees. 
and 15 degrees on, on a, uh, a 60, 60 thousandths pitch is, is probably about two or three thousandths of an inch. Yeah, I, I think I know where you're going. Now, before I had the base up there and I was taking a little bit off the shoulder. Mm -hmm. So my lid would go on further. Mm -hmm. I eventually put the lid in and was taking wood off right here. Mm -hmm. If I have this thing completely done and I've taken my, my tenon away, mm -hmm. I can put this on a piece of sandpaper mm -hmm. and, and just very gently take a little bit off and check it, take a little bit off and see if, is that kind of. That's, that's what I was thinking. Yes. Yeah. And that works really well. Yeah, thank you. you. Just, yeah. All right. Well, you put in a long evening. We appreciate it. Yeah. It's well, very helpful. It, it's not bad. I had one um, British Columbia a week ago, and it was after 10 o'clock. <laughs> and, I, and I was still out here. It's like, <laughs> so this is great. This, this is brilliant. <laughs> much better. Anyway. Yeah, well, thank you very much. Well, thank you. Thank I appreciate you. your invitation. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. And give me yeah. a call if you have any questions. Well, that website that you gave us uh, with all the information on that and all the, uh, all the downloads available, that's really good. Very useful. Yep. And I'll definitely send that out to everybody. So we all have it. No, it's all, all on right. the website. It's a lot of good stuff there. Thank it's you. Good. Okay, well, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. We'll see you.